two writers, one just starting out, the other a bestseller. Join James Blatch and Mark Dawson and their amazing guests as they discuss how you can make a living telling stories. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to the Self-Publishing Formula podcast with Mark Dawson and James Blatch from the still sunny UK. Delighted to be with you on this Friday or whenever you happen to download the podcast and very pleased you've joined us. We uh, pride ourselves on uh, podcasts from the SPF being uh, value packed and not being a waste of your time, actually adding to your uh, author existence. And this episode is absolutely no exception. We're going to be looking at author websites with some really good practical advice. But before then, let me just welcome Mark. Are you, uh, are you well? I'm very well. Yeah, I thought you might have forgotten I was here. But um, uh, yes, I'm here very well. Um, I have a clear head, which is probably something that you don't have Ooh. or fat my wife or your wife or plenty of other people who went to your 20th wedding anniversary party on Saturday night. Yeah, we should it was, say. It was quite entertaining. <laughs> there was a um, Mrs. Blatch and I marked 20 years, actually on Wednesday uh, this week, but we had a little, a very informal barbecue at the local pub, our local pub, and uh, we had 50 or 60 of our closest friends there. And us. <laughs> oh, well, we're delighted to see you there. And... And much drink was had, as is the British way of, of marking any kind of event in life. Yes, it was. It was quite entertaining, to, as uh, as Lucy said to me, seeing people of uh, in their forties and fifties getting absolutely pissed out of their heads, <laughs> jumping around, jump around, like lunatics. Jump around. At, uh, well, well, yes, hang on. That, that, was, that was the highlight. I can throw out some shapes on the dance floors. I think you saw. And uh, at fifty-one, I didn't just see them. I, I recorded them for posterity and posted them in the SPF community. And um, was was distressed to find uh, it was uh, the comments were swamped with good goodwill. I was expecting derision, but there yeah, wasn't any. No, that's the British way to uh, to rat on everyone. No, there were some very nice comments in the Facebook group. Thank you very much indeed for posting uh, that image of me dancing uh, half cut. It's there on, forever. On the dance floor. It is. It's there forever. So I put my digital footprint now. Um, yeah, it was really good. And John Dyer was there, and Catherine, one of our VAs, who some of you will hear from uh, occasionally. And I think you spoke to Farmer David as well, Catherine's husband, who's celebrating because it was the day after harvest. But I yes, we did talk about that. Yeah, that was that was quite interesting. Um, and such as such as other people's lives, just a little glimpse into somebody else's life. So David's a farmer. So it was the day after harvest. It where he, basically Catherine doesn't see him for six weeks, however long it takes to to cut the barley and etc. He stayed at ours. The gin and the whiskey came out until about three o'clock in the morning. And then at nine o'clock, he had to leave because they start drilling, which is planting seeds for the next harvest on the Sunday. Goodness. Yeah, that's 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 real work. I think I actually did say that to him. That, that's yeah. uh, we don't really have. I don't have a proper job. I sit around in my pants writing, um, writing stuff um, and getting paid for it. Whereas that's, you know, he said to me, you know, getting up at or working from six in the morning until mm -hmm. 12 at night mm -hmm. for several weeks uh, that's that's you know hats, hats off to to david for that that's uh, that's impressive how, how did he react to you telling him i just sit around and get paid for writing in my underpants yeah he was he was surprisingly <laughs> um, you, right? he was surprisingly <laughs> generous as i uh, raised my glass and toasted myself he, being a lucky bastard he's a lovely guy i've known david a few years and the, the greatest thing is he lets me drive his tractors sometimes so, and that's not a euphemism either. That's actually driving his tractors, uh, which I enjoy doing. And uh, Catherine's an it does sound like a yeah. Euphemism. Catherine is an important part of the SPF team. So it was yeah, it was a really lovely one of those uh, life events that I was very pleased. If I could have invited everybody listening to the podcast, I would have done. But there is an opportunity to come and have a drink with us, uh, and I shall be buying again, uh, or so will you. Uh, that will be in St. Pete Beach in Florida uh, towards the end of September. We'll come up with a definite date. Uh, the the place will almost certainly be the Shark Tooth Tavern at the Tradewinds Resort in St. Pete Beach. And we'll come up with a day, uh, an evening of the week to, for you to come along and uh, have a beer on us if you're anywhere near that area of Florida. And if it's only a short flight away from places like Canada. So you can uh, you can get there and get a drink off us. So we'll, uh, we'll give you that date shortly. Um, well, we should say uh, that before we go on, that the 101 course is open as we record this on Friday. It's going to be open for a couple of weeks. So we will close it no later than the 26th of September and self-publishing 101 is the course funny enough it's the course that you dreamed of right at the beginning but then realized it was far too big 
to actually get done when we first started uh, this company together. But but quickly, the, you know, 12 months later, when we got the first course under our belt, you wanted to revisit it. And it, it, it's a monster of a course, but for good reason, I guess, because you wanted it to be this all-encompassing start for authors. Yeah, it's a, it's a course that I would have... I would have been very, very keen to get involved with um, when I started self-publishing. So uh, from the moment you finish your manuscript, so basically you you type the end or you're close, you can see that coming. Or even if you know you think you might do that in the next six or 12 months, uh, it's the course that takes you from that point to, and covers everything that you need to do to get your books um, formatted. Um, so they look pretty, covers, everything uploaded, metadata added. So they're searchable, uh, websites, uh, mailing lists, uh, kind of at low level advertising, launching, ev- everything that I could think of that was important to uh, give you the best start possible for uh, fiction or nonfiction, doesn't have to be fiction, um, to, to be uh, something that the course will cover. And yeah, we, we put it together. I mean, it's it's easy to navigate. It is a big course, it's over 20 hours of content, but it's easy to navigate. People do dip in and out of it as, as, they, as they need to. We've got things like the tech library where we um, cover a kind of account setup for pretty much anything that you could um, you could think you might need. So various email service providers, all the retailers, formatting three or four versions uh, or different options for formatting from Vellum on the one hand to things like the Readsy book editor on the other hand. Uh, lots and lots and lots of useful, uh, well, more than useful, important and essential um, content for people as they get started with their publishing careers. Yeah, and um, it's uh, we've got a long list of people who've been knocking at our door saying that they want to record testimonial interviews with us, and John and I get around to them uh, as much as we can um, because it's been. We have to be careful about saying life changing. When you say life changing, people go, mm, roll their eyes a little bit, but that's what people say to us because uh, people want to write, and having a living, being paid for doing what they love, is a huge huge deal for some people so if they can unlock that using the knowledge you've accumulated the hard way mark then that's uh, that's our job done isn't it so you can go and read all about the course uh, and potentially uh, purchase if you want to do that if you go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash 101 and uh, like I said, it'll be open uh, for a couple of weeks yet. Uh, if you're if you're listening to this at the right time on the uh, Friday, what date is it today? It's the beginning of September, so the first Friday in September. 7th, I think, which was my parents' wedding anniversary in a funny kind of looping way. Okay, we uh, also, before we get on with uh, today's practical side of the podcast, I want to welcome our new Patreon uh, supporters. So patreon.com forward slash SPF podcast is the place where you can go if you want to support the podcast from as little as a dollar an episode. And you get lots of goodies in return for that, Um, uh, particularly at the gold level where you get a pin and you get a opportunity to have your book torn apart uh, metaphorically by the uh, by the experts so the cover and the blurb and the look inside get um, get properly analyzed by experts to help you turn it into something that's going to sell even better uh, that's the gold level group so we are welcoming our new patreon supporters steve davidson from leicester in the uk rose loretta from bc british columbia canada tommy don bavand from lancashire in the united kingdom and roderick b lacy there's a good name from san diego uh, in the united states and uh, well, we should say, well, isn't that how lovely of Tommy Don Bavand to uh, to become a supporter of ours? Because we are definitely supporters of him. Tommy, we have mentioned before on the podcast, and you may know his story. He is a writer, as I say, from the UK. And uh, Tommy just had the worst possible news delivered to him a couple of years ago when he was told by his doctor that he had inoperable throat cancer. Well, he threw himself into the treatments, which were brutal and punishing and almost killed him. So he ended up in intensive care. I think he actually had one of those moments where the light starts to go and then it got brighter again for him. He had a, he had hours to live, but but came back from that. It's been a very long and slow and painful haul for Tommy, but he is still alive. He is still here. He is still writing and he's very much a part of the SPF community. So we're delighted that Tommy's uh, supporting us and wants to be on Patreon. Thank you very much, Tommy. And we should say in return for that, that if you want to uh, read about Tommy, read his blog, which is actually inspiring in its own right. And also you can support Tommy in his fight against cancer at tommyvcancer.com uh, tommyvcancer.com so welcome all of you steve rose tommy and roderick you can join them by going to uh, patreon.com forward slash spf podcast right 
Mark. So we promised some value on this episode and we are going to deliver because uh, we are going to talk about author websites. Now there are some things in the author world that you can pick and choose and maybe not do or maybe put off until later, but having a presence on the web, a little bit of your own corner of the web uh, is an essential, right? Yeah, there's tons of reasons why it's important, but um, you do need a website. It's, I've seen a few authors who don't have one, and some are, some of them are doing okay. But generally speaking, um, everyone is going to need a website, um, just for well, for lots of reasons. Really, for it's a place for people to contact you. Um, it's a place where you can have your books with links going out to the various retailers. You can uh, use it to uh, gather up email addresses and add them to your uh, your newsletter list. You can do clever things like retargeting with uh, things like Facebook pixels and Google pixels to build um, audiences that you can then advertise to. There are lots and lots of reasons why you need to have one. It doesn't need to be complicated. Um, it's, it's pretty simple these days. And, and one of the things that uh, we'll talk about in this episode is just how easy it is and can be to put your own website together. And the other exciting thing about this episode is we have a third presenter. Yeah, we do. We've unlocked the uh, the cellar door and um, <laughs> left uh, some cookie crumbs on the stairs <laughs> and tempted tempted John Dyer into the light. Blinking um, into the light. So it's yes, blinking into the light. Uh, so for the first time in hundred and however many episodes we've we've done, he is actually a featured guest on the podcast. So I should warn people who are watching on YouTube, um, also with all seriousness, this is going to be um, quite a shocking experience for you as. As James and John um, talk about websites, um, but um, well, he, I was going to say, in, in all seriousness, but actually that is in all, all seriousness. Um, so <laughs> bear that in mind and, and enjoy the the sight of. I mean, he's, uh, he's got a beard to compete with yours. I think it's a slightly <laughs> bigger beard. You both got a Father Christmas uh, thing, and uh, I worked. Is it a big? I don't know. Well, he's less grey. He's, he's older than me, but I look older than he does, probably. So that's the Indian complexion. I've worked out that I'm the Frank Beard of SPF. Do you know who Frank Beard is? I, I do, James. Yes, um, this, this isn't because we recorded the episode twice because you didn't record the push the right button earlier. It's not that um, Frank Beard is the beardless member of ZZ Top. Yes, he he's the um, one without and the beard. And you are, you are indeed the. Uh, I think he's the drummer as well, he is. isn't he? Yeah, he's the drummer. The... How do you know if? How do you know if uh, the drum riser is level? I don't know. How do you know if the drum riser is level? Drool runs equally down both sides of the drummer's face. That's a drummer joke. I know, I know some drummers. One of, one of so, a long line of drummer jokes. There were quite a lot. Yeah, anyway, we're, we're, we're wildly deviating, so we should probably get um, straight into the We should. The, so uh, the, way this is go- the, the way this is going to work is that John is going to be the expert on Squarespace. Um, we then will hand to uh, experts in the relative uh, field for uh, Wix. And Squarespace and Wix, as you'll hear in a moment, are fairly similar. And then the step up from that, slightly more complex and more powerful option for you, is WordPress. And that's going to be Craig Mathias. So let me hand over to me and the uh, the dire a rare sighting of the dire well it's a rare appearance isn't it for the bearded one well there's two bearded ones in in spf but you're the um the father christmas beard i'm the more exotic bearded one mm. should we say <laughs> Self, self-diagnosed self exotic. Um, yes. Yeah, so, John Dyer, welcome to the podcast. Not your very first appearance. In fact, you made a cameo at the end of the New York uh, podcast, which was mm. noted by a few people on Facebook. I caused mayhem, I think. You did, yeah. You, you moved into shot and immediately pulled over the uh, microphone or something else. But uh, there you go. That's why we keep that, you is, all, that, that is my style. That keep is you my away style. from the equipment. Okay, look, yeah. this is, uh, a, a, as I said to Mark, a value-packed uh, episode. We're going to give people some, um, some useful information to help them put in place something that, whether we like it or not, is an absolute essential. Now, we do get to the point with quite a few of these. Now, Facebook ads, probably because of AMS ads over the last year, has started to become something you don't absolutely have to do. Although Mark would probably argue with that and say you should be doing Facebook ads. But I know successful authors doing forty or $50,000 a month who don't run Facebook ads. They just run AMS ads. But through all those changes, that will happen, and that may change uh, next year. Uh, for all these things to happen, a website remains an essential, right? Absolutely. Um, well, you can't do anything without a website. So regardless of whether you're using Facebook ads or Amazon ads or any other kind of marketing, you do need that shop front for your brand. And we go on about authors being brands as part of our course. And that is absolutely paramount when you come to think about how people are going to access you online. 
you've got to look good and you've got to look the part. It's easy to have a suspect website. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest, we've seen enough of those over the years. But it's also pretty easy to have a really good professional website that doesn't cost the earth. Yeah. Okay. And that's what this uh, this podcast is all about. Uh, and it's a little bit of real estate that you call your own. So it's more than, I think, you know, talk about shop windows, a very important part of it. And some people will do a little bit of due diligence on you as an author, make sure you're bona fide and they see a really nice slick website. That's only going to contribute to your sales. Um, but that real estate is quite important because by their terms and service, affiliate links can only be on areas of the internet that you own and have access to and you might want to list your books with affiliate links on your website completely legitimately that's not to say some people don't use those affiliate links in advertising and so on but uh tos would suggest that you should have them only on a place you own so you want a bit of the internet that you own jamesblatch.com uh, is my one and ideally you'd be your your author name.com but um we can perhaps talk about urls in a bit as to what you do if you're if you're bob smith or in a more common name certainly in the western world what you would do but we're going to look at three hosts how first of all before we get into the three how have you chosen these three so the well the the first one squarespace i have quite a lot of experience uh with in fact you and i know that our separate business uses a squarespace website and has done for years and it's served us very very well uh it's what i'd call a cost effective but looks premium uh type offering the other player that dominates a similar space to squarespace out there in the market is wix which has come on in leaps and bounds. So again, it's a template-based system like Squarespace. It's actually a little bit cheaper to operate um, than Squarespace. Definitely worth a look because they've added so much to it in recent years, um, including uh, templates that will work especially for authors. Right. And the final option, and everyone will probably have heard of WordPress, um, it's certainly the one that's for those that are up for a little bit more of a challenge if you're going to be doing it yourself. Um, it is far more flexible than either of those other two options, but you need to know your onions when it comes to dealing with the innards of it. And as you know, our selfpublishingformula.com site is based on WordPress. And we've had a few moments. We have, <laughs> over yeah. The years with it WordPress. Is, it's not the... Um most passive option you do need to be a little bit yeah. involved with wordpress and keep on top of it so so that's a good guide right from the beginning of people thinking which one to choose is if you want the minimum amount of you involved in the website squarespace and wix are probably going to be the choice Correct. if you want to be a little bit more advanced and hands-on you're not afraid of that i mean not massively you can still have people looking after it and do nearly all of the legwork but we have had occasions uh, with wordpress where it comes complicated and your developer will be on to you for things that you've got to provide for them to make make it all work. So you do kind of need to know at least how to answer their questions. And if you're really underconfident about that area, uh, probably Wix and Squarespace are the ones. Uh, yeah, well, in the in the chat that we'll follow with Craig Mathias, who is a, a WordPress expert, he's got quite a few useful tips in terms of how to approach the whole WordPress issue if, if you're that way inclined. Okay, well, look... Um, Let's start with Squarespace because that's your mm. one and then we're going to move on to Wix and then we'll finish on, on WordPress. And we'll try and make these succinct and, uh, and useful. And you've given me some notes in advance, which is great because I'm not a webmaster. Uh, so let's start with, with what Squarespace is. So Squarespace is a template-based system. It's been around in excess of 10 years. It's gone very mainstream in the last few years. So you might have seen ads with the likes of Jeff Bridges and Keanu Reeves um, extolling its virtues we used it way back for our video production website and what drew me to it was that there was no code involved so for someone like me who didn't want to get their hands dirty with code but just wanted to have a great looking functional website uh, to show the world this was the perfect option there were other options around there but i think squarespace has seen them off and it's still going strong today if you have a look at their website and hopefully uh, for people watching this on video, you'll see some cutaways to uh, some of the templates that I'm talking about. They're very, very beautifully crafted. Uh, it's easy to add content. It doesn't take long to get up to speed. And it's got a fantastic support network in terms of videos and articles online. So you can 
very quickly find your feet. A lot of the hard work has been done, of course, because you've got a template. So you're not sitting there thinking, how do I fit that image into that space? One point I will make, which I think we make in all, all of the chats on the websites today, is that your website, regardless of whether it's on Squarespace, Wix, or WordPress, or any other, is only going to be as good as what you put into it. Mm-hmm. So that that is copy content, but also images. Yeah. So please make sure that if you've got a a portrait image in there. It's not one that was shot on a Nokia in 2005. It needs to look good. And of course your book covers, it goes without saying really you have to be tip top. Um, so with all of those ingredients, with something like Squarespace, you should be able to create a really solid, a starter author website, or if you've already got a website that you feel requires tweaking and polishing, Squarespace would be a good option for you. Yeah. So I've created a couple of Squarespace websites, including for my local cricket club. And um, I'm not particularly technically adept when it comes to these things, but I found it really easy. And they have a, it's a kind of frames system, isn't it? Which I remember maybe eight or nine years ago. Was it that long when we started our first Squarespace website? It was yeah. a leap ahead of everything else that was around there. It looked beautiful. It scrolled really nicely. It's it. Uh, we haven't mentioned mobile and tablet yet, but that's a inf- really important part of it, which we'll talk about in a second. Did all of that. Now, everyone else has caught up a bit, but Squarespace is still a very impressive uh, presence in the market and probably the market leader on that front. Hmm. Uh, it, it, it's the, the templates, I think, are head and shoulders above everyone else. Uh, Wix is is not far behind for the, for the template-based systems. Um, it's got... Uh, this is, I think this is a good feature of Squarespace. In terms of mobile responsiveness, which is, if you're wondering what we're talking about, what we mean is when you look at a website on a uh, smartphone or a tablet, it's still going to look good. It's not, you're not going to get the, the mini uh, desktop version staring at you. So Squarespace will automatically transpose a site to a mobile-friendly version, whatever device it's being looked at on. That's great. On Wix, you've actually got a bit more control over your mobile versions. But for me, Squarespace is quite nice. You don't have to think about it. Yeah. It just does it automatically. Yeah. And most of the time, it's it's spot on. It's really user-friendly. And it's really nice when you're creating your website. You can just move the screen into a different format and it automatically will reshape. And you'll see how it will rescale for, for the different devices, yeah. see what it's going to look like. It's very important. Um, and something else I, I like about Squarespace, but I'm not sure whether Wix do this or they probably do, but I'm not familiar with Wix, is that so people need to understand, if they don't understand this already, that you, your URL your, is hosted somewhere. And now that's normally different from the company you go to for your website. So traditionally, for instance, even the early days of Squarespace, you'd go to somewhere like One and One, One and One, or GoDaddy, or you'd get a URL, you'd buy jamesblatch.com, for instance, or johndyer.com. You would own that. Then you'd go to somewhere to build the website and you'd link them together with a little bit of following instructions of how to do that. But one thing Squarespace does is it offers that hosting built in as part of your subscription. So if you haven't got your .com at the moment, you can actually go onto Squarespace, build your website, and then simply say, I want to use this .com. As long as it's available, Squarespace will grab it and that will be wrapped up as part of your subscription all in one place, which is nice, neat solution. So you, you don't end up having to, for instance, answer questions to a webmaster saying, give me your one-on-one login details and all that yes. stuff. Um, I know. It's a blessed relief in terms of um, that approach. So yes, it's, it's, a, it's a one-stop shop, really. Yeah, it, your, can, it can be a one-stop shop, but you can yeah. still host it separately. And, and yes, I you think can. We you probably can. do do that. Um, I want to ask you about costs before we go on then, so people have an idea in their minds, because Squarespace and Wix presumably are going to be the lower cost options compared to WordPress. Yeah, for Squarespace, you're looking at around for the for the basic option, which should be absolutely fine for 95% of authors out there, and that's about $12 a month, uh, the current rate. So peanuts, really. I think Wix comes in at slightly cheaper. I think Stuart talks about that in, in our chat later. Um, so these are not high-cost options. And uh, as with Wix, there's a free trial on offer at Squarespace as well. So you can actually get in there, get your hands a little bit dirty, throw in some images and content and see what it looks like and see if it um, floats your boat. But um, it, it, the, the cost element is something that you shouldn't be too worried about going forward either. And it's it's very manageable. Okay. So you've written a little list of pros 
for Squarespace here to kind of sum up why Squarespace is a good option, particularly for the sort of entry level uh, author website. So do you want to go through those? I remember them. <laughs> I've got them written no, down. I can't remember. Go on. Yeah, go on. Tem um, go on. You've got them in front of you. Go ahead. Templates. Templates, it, it just takes all the hard yeah. work out of designing because unless you are a, um, a gifted designer, you're always going to spend a lot of time and you're going to struggle ultimately to come up with something that everyone's going to find appealing. So big tick for templates. You've written flexibility down here. Yeah, you can you can pick one of the templates and you can work with that template religiously and strictly and just drop content in. But you can also tweak it and make it your own. Um, the, the, what Squarespace uses are these things called blocks that you can move around the page. There's all kinds of blocks from a video block, for example, so you can drop video content in there. Uh, to other blocks that provide integrations with other services, such as MailChimp, which is uh, a, a, a useful interaction. Um, so you are not stuck with the same design or a very limited design. You can make it really work for you. Okay. How easy is it ch to change the template once it's up? Say after a year, you want to refresh your website. You can change the template. Um, now, there are certain limitations with that because... What Squarespace will let you do is preview a template change. You can have a look at that change and decide whether you want to go through all the kerfuffle of uh, changing it completely. Now, sometimes the switch can be very straightforward and easy. It depends on the template itself. Uh, some are structured in a way that would make a template switch quite difficult and would probably give you a fair bit of donkey work to do to okay. change it over. Others are much more... Um, simpler if they're closer aligned okay yeah. so you've also written animations yeah the animations topic this is an interesting one because um animations on squarespace at the moment are fairly limited now animations are really there to just add a little bit of sparkle or fairy dust to your to your website it's something where it's a, it's an area where wix has actually made uh, greater improvements than squarespace i suspect we'll see it on squarespace uh, in the months and years to come. So they're missing on Squarespace at the moment, available on Wix. Um, the one note of caution is, and this is coming from Stuart, as you'll hear, is don't go overboard with the animations because they can become very distracting and annoying. But they do add a nice professional touch if used correctly. Okay. Uh, app market. Yes, yeah, so when I say app market, I'm talking about all the various integrations that you can uh, use, and that this applies to Squarespace and Wix. So these systems don't just um, sit there in isolation. Uh, Wix, for example, will also, and this actually this applies to Squarespace as well, you've always got the option to drop in a bit of code. Now, I know when I say code, a lot of people start... Um, getting panicky and worried, and, and and I would ordinarily. But a system like MailerLite, for example, will allow you to just take a bit of code from your account with them and drop it into Squarespace or Wix to make sure that you can get signups that will link directly to your account. Now, it is really easy to do. Okay. I've said code, but please don't be worried by that. It is dead straightforward to do. Okay. So these both of these sites are great examples of sites that are designed to work in the real world with different situations. Okay. Uh, you've mentioned integration. So the final kind of pro of Squarespace is automatic backups. Although I'm assuming there's backups on, on both WordPress and Wix as well, right? Correct. It's something that you don't need to have sleepless nights about. Um, your site is automatically backed up. Uh, let's be honest, you and I both know we've had situations whereby there's been um, uh, some kind of issue at uh, Squarespace, for example, but they're normally resolved uh, very quickly. And I've noticed of late there are far less issues. Yeah, they had a, probably this time last year, there were a couple of times when Squarespace was going down, parts of their server were going down for a few hours and it happened. Yeah. Uh, I think it happened to one, once to us at a fairly critical time in our company and you followed them on Twitter and they're saying, yeah, we've got a problem. And it, but it does get resolved in a matter of hours. But I haven't seen a outage on Squarespace for some time now. So maybe no, I think they've, 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 they've sharpened up their act. 
shovel um, some more coal in the uh, boiler there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Right. Well, that's pr- that's the summary of Squarespace and gives people an idea. Obviously, you can go to squarespace.com and have a proper uh, fiddle about and have a look at that. And as John says, there's a free trial which enables you to effectively create the website and see what it's going to look, look look like before you're committed to uh, uh, the monthly. Uh, subscription which as john mentioned is is very reasonable i think for squarespace so these are the minimum things you should be looking at by the way um you know there there are other website builders out there I and mean, i think microsoft still shipped that awful one that they did for years and uh, they they are simply not good enough anymore so the reason we're covering this and, and what runs through this and mark and john and i will all say this is you you should be aspiring to a very pro looking website um, that's indistinguishable from a you know another commercial entity um, that's turning over a lot of money, and you can do that with these services with Squarespace. And the next one is Wix, John, which is another. It's come along. It advertises heavily on on um, on YouTube with people who introduce themselves at the beginning, and I've never heard of them, but I'm sure other people have uh, who are someone in the world of YouTube, and they're advertising Wix and. It's pretty much like Squarespace, right? But uh, perhaps it's a little bit more funky in places. I don't know. Yeah, it's slightly slightly cheaper to get started. A little bit more funky in places, as you say. Definitely worth a look. And uh, again, just just give it a go. Just it's a free trial. You can um, get it, get a website up and running. See what it looks like. Uh, show it to friends and family, whatever, get some feedback before you make your decision. And obviously the chat that's going to follow is with Stuart, who who has created our Wix module on the 101 course. And it might be um, timely to remind people I've done the Squarespace equivalent on the 101 course. And of course, Craig, he'll follow further down the line with his uh, blurb on uh, WordPress has done a similar module as well. Yes. So, and the, these are detailed instructional guides to how to actually build your website using it, which obviously we haven't got time to, to go into on them. Um, and also, people wouldn't buy the 101 course. I'm joking. We give as much <laughs> out as we possibly can on the podcast, but we can't give you detailed yeah. instruction on how to build your website. But that's all included in 101. Okay, well, look, let's hear from Stuart, who is our resident Wix expert, and then we'll have a chat off the back of that. Hello, Stu. How how is Stu? Um, big event has happened in your life. What is that? Um, yeah, I've uh, had a baby. Well, I haven't, obviously, but uh, my other half has had a baby uh, last week or two weeks ago. So she was two weeks old yesterday. So, yes, it's been... Uh, <laughs> well, if you stop talking too long, I might fall asleep. So <laughs> that, that, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm concerned about. It's either that or there will be something to do. Uh, yeah, with um, with little one, but um, congratulations! Uh, Thank you very much on behalf of all of us. Anyway, let's cut to the chase because, of course, time is of the essence. You're here to talk about Wix, yes, uh, this fantastic website platform which has grown and grown and grown uh, in the last sort of five uh, years or so, and it's now become a serious player. If uh, you're looking to host your author website in a kind of functional, stylish, but in a cost-effective way as well. Anyway, just tell us a bit more about Wix from your perspective, Stu, because you've gone and done the module for it for 101, so you should know what you're talking about. So Hopefully. so what is Wix? Um, Wix is an online template-based website builder. Uh, the online bit means that you can access it from any computer, anytime, anywhere, uh, which is really handy. Um, it's not something you download to your computer, and it's it comes with lots and lots of functionality but the basic structure is that you can choose a template that you like something that kind of suits you um, and then you can adapt that and make it completely bespoke for your business or or your 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 personality or whatever Um, so it's it's really easy to use it's really intuitive and just with a little bit of kind of understanding of how things work you can pretty much make a website in a very short, short space of time Mm. It, it sounds like it's um, it's it's definitely in the running for authors who are considering, uh, especially authors who are considering their first uh, author website. Um, just a few um, questions. I mean, why would it be good for an author, for example, especially one starting out? 
Yeah. I mean, you know, there's lots of competitors out there, lots of people to talk about, you know, and I know we're doing a bit about WordPress on here, but, you know, 25% of all websites are built on website uh, on WordPress, um, which means, you know, 75% aren't. So there's a lot of people using these kind of tools to build their their first or, or, or later websites. <clears throat> and trust me, you know, Wix is not a startup kit kind of version. It is a, a really sophisticated, advanced um, builder which will give you a website that's mobile responsive. Um, it, it you know allows you to completely change whatever you're looking at. You can change fonts, colors, backgrounds, you know, the way it's laid out, everything, um, right down to, to the wire, really. Um, so f- in terms of uh, an author it may be starting out or coming to it later, maybe they've had another um, kind of service and they don't like it or they're not happy with it, you know, Wix is definitely one to look at just simply because it's so easy to use. There's so much help out there for it as well. I mean, you can literally Google anything about Wix and there'll be a help page on it or someone's done it before you, you know. Mm. Um, and it's if you've got your assets ready to go, and that's always a good starting point to make sure you can kind of got an idea of what you want your website to look like in the first place um, with high quality images, then you can really just get in there, stick them in, you know, change the text and and get on with it. Um, Wix actually offers two kind of things, really. One is the ADI, which we talk about in the 101 course, which is really, really clever. I mean, you just literally put in that you want an author website. Um, You put in some of your details, hit go, and it basically creates the website for you. Wow. Um, With with, with backgrounds and and colors and everything else. So, yeah, it's really, and that's literally 10 minute job, you know, and you'll have a really nice looking website. If you don't want to use the ADI or you want to be a little bit more sophisticated, you can use the Wix editor, which is uh, a little bit more in detail. You can change a lot more. It's got a lot more functionality. But as a starting point, you know, just to get a feel for the thing, you can go in and just create a website and see what it looks like. And that's one of the great things about Wix as well is you can sign up for free and you don't have to pay to play. You can just basically set up an account and off you go and just kind of play around with how you think it looks, what you want. You know, you don't have to publish that and then you can go on to the editor or you can change what you're doing on the ADI. You know, there's a lot of flexibility within that for free. Brilliant. I mean, this is this automatically sounds like a fantastic proposition. And here's an obvious question for you. I'm assuming with all this technology that the website that you create is mobile responsive, i.e. it's going to look good on an iPad or um, a smartphone. Yeah, I mean, it even has a little uh, icon at the top which says, you know, preview on, and you can look at your website on a on a mobile device, on a right. tablet, on a right. phone. So you can really, and they're distinct as well. In other words, you can actually change what's on the mobile as you know against what's on the desktop. So they're right. actually can be two different types of website it's kind of uh one of those things people kind of look at it and think oh this is really complicated but just a a, a few minutes spent trying to play with it you can't break it um you know and i take you through in the course right from the start of even signing up with your email address and then how you get from there to you know a a website that you can then publish if you want to the other thing is you know once you've done that and you've had a play it's really cost effective. I mean, I think it, it comes in, I mean, the middle tier is around about eight pounds. So about $10 a month. Wow. And that gives you plenty, you know, enough of you, what you would need for an author website, everything you would need. And that includes your hosting. So you don't have to have it hosted elsewhere. So you're okay. actually paying Wix to have your website hosted. So in terms of domain names, they'll look after that as well. Can you purchase a, dom- a domain name for your author website through Wix? You can. Um, it's not always the best idea to do that. Um, it's better to hold your website name elsewhere from a, an independent, um, just because if you wanted to separate them at any point, it becomes a little bit more complicated. But you certainly can do that. So if you've already bought a domain name or you want to buy one, it's no problem attaching that to your Wix website. And that's really simple. There's a really easy to use kind of guide as to how to do that. So if we talk about mailing lists uh, next, is it possible to integrate um, a tool such as MailChimp with Wix? I mean, generally, what are the integrations like? Is it easy, straightforward, and who do they cater for? So in a previous incarnation, Wix were actually integrated with MailChimp completely. They were like partners, but they have actually separated. But that doesn't matter because what Wix have done is they've actually set up their own kind of MailChimp within Wix. So you can sign up to their internal 
um, mail server uh, or email server. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that um, in terms of then putting your MailChimp or your MailerLite or whatever it is into your Wix website. It's really simple. Um, essentially, when you sign up for your MailChimp or your MailerLite, you'll, every time you create a form, it will give you a piece of code. Um, and then you can embed that code into the website wherever you want it. And that will be a form that people can sign in. And as long as you've made it look like the same colors and the same background and everything else as your website, it's seamless. You wouldn't even know it was, was integrated. And actually, that sounds like something alternative, but that's actually what most people do. Most people will embed a form from their mail server into their website, whether it's WordPress or, or Wix. So, yeah, that's really simple to do. And again, there's help, help um, listings on there to tell you how to do that. Fantastic. Um, is that something that you go through in your module? Yes, it is. Um, obviously, we can't go into too much detail about how to get the code itself from the mail server because they're all different. But again, that's really simple to do. And once you, and you know, even if you know a, a, a website developer, they'll be able to help you with that. Um, but it's a ten minute job when you know what you're doing. It's it's very very simple. Okay, that's that's fantastic. So um, to sort of sum up, really, the pros and cons of Wix. What what would you say are the the big pros of going with a template based system online such as Wix? Just the, the ease of use. And I would honestly challenge most people to tell the difference between a website built on something like Wix from any other kind of builder, whether it be WordPress or, or something like strikingly or whatever, um, because that they are so sophisticated. They're so slick. You know, you can have, all the animated backgrounds, all the animated moving stuff. You can have, you know, beautiful layouts, all the different templates. It really is impossible near enough to tell the difference between, you know, what's built on Wix and what's built elsewhere. So from that point of view, it's a really good intro to getting building a website. Um, you know, something like Strikingly is a similar thing. Uh, again, that's running at around $60 a month, uh, including hosting. That's not got quite the sort of sophistication of Wix, but again, just a really good entry level um, starting point to build a website. I mean, I actually build most of my websites on Wix or strikingly. Um, and, and Weebly is another one if you wanted to look at that in comparison. But yeah, it's got loads of integrations, loads of apps, you know, beautiful looking websites, fully responsive, really reasonable cost. And um, from somebody just wanting to have a play and, and try something out, I think Wix is a fantastic starting point. That's fantastic. I mean, one thing, one point that we should make, which we've we've always made all along, is that, of course, um, a website, whether you're using Wix or another service, is only as good as the sum of its parts. So people have to make sure that their book covers are good. They have to make sure that their... Uh, portrait shots of themselves are good and that uh, there's nothing amateur in there because of course that will turn people off this is your shop front basically for for you the brand that is you and uh, the books that you sell so that, that's an important point to make are there any cons to Wix um not that I can think of, honestly. I mean, it's, you know, as I've said, it's cost effective and it, they look great. I mean, it, there is some level of knowledge needed. I mean, it's, you know, if, with everything like this, you do need to have a little bit of understanding of how these things work. Um, so perhaps that's a con. Um, some people can overload their website. You know, they get on there and they see all these fantastic apps and animations and things fly in and pictures spin round and all this. Mm. And people can uh, overdo that a little bit sometimes. And that can make your website pretty, what they call sort of heavy, which means it loads a bit slower. So don't be tempted to sort of throw everything at it just because it's there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I honestly can't really think of a con that, that would put you off from using it if you're looking for a website builder. And I understand that you can actually trial it before you buy it. Yeah, yeah. As I say, it's free to, to get in there and set up an account and have a play. Um, you get full access to everything, and then you can decide what level of uh, subscription you want. And I think it ranges from free right the way up to about £16, so about $20 a month. Um, but the middle one, which is about 6 or $8, $10, something like that, is, is probably completely sufficient for what an author would need okay uh, uh, that, that's fantastic it seems to me then wix is a great choice for those who want to give it a go who have a very basic technical proficiency um which kind of sums up me really um 
and you should be able to get a very good author website at the end of it. I know that some of our students, some of our very successful students use Wix, people like um, Maria Louise, Janie Crouch, Susan Gable, Matt War, they, they all stand by Wix. So I think it, it's definitely a great option for people to consider moving forward. And whether you've already got a website and you want to upgrade it to something a little bit more contemporary and eye-catching, I think Wix still fits that bill. Have you got any final tips for people considering Wix moving forward, Stu? I mean, Wix certainly shouldn't be seen as a second choice option. Um, it's, it, you know, it's a really good contender for fantastic websites. My tips would be get in there, play with it. You can't break it. You know, have a play with all the bits and pieces, move things around, see what they do and really get under the skin of it. I mean, you know, if you do sign up for the 101 course, I do try and take you through as much as we can in the time we've got. So you can follow that and have a play along. Um, but as you said, really, just make sure you've got good, good content to go in there and have a think about how you want it to look, you know, what kind of colors, all that sort of thing. And you can change all of that as you go along. And then, you know, if you get five, five weeks into it and you decide you want to change something, again, you can just go in and do it. It's really, really simple. So um, tips would be don't be afraid, have a play and make sure your content's great. Perfect. Stu, thank you ever so much. I think we've done very well considering the time constraints. I'm sure you've got to go and sort out some laundry or warm some bottles or... <laughs> Whatever it is, I, I, I've, I just can't remember that far back. Okay, so that's Wix. And uh, as we mentioned before, Stuart's done an instructional tutorial, as you have for Squarespace. It's part of the 101 course. So um, there's something to think about if you want to be able to follow along and, and build your website. But actually, when I watched the course and I edited uh, the video that, that Stuart created for that course, I was converted a little bit to Wix. I really like some of the platform. It is culturally a little bit different from Squarespace, works in a different way, but I really like the options. And uh, and ultimately, again, like Squarespace, the accent is on a visually impressive website. Agreed. And I think hopefully YouTubers, and I know not everyone's watching this or listening to it on YouTube, you will have seen uh, a little extract um, of an author website example that sits on Wix and it's pretty damn impressive um, so like you I was taken aback because Squarespace is kind of like my first love in terms of website design or simple website design uh, but Wix is definitely worth checking out and um, giving a go because it could be the one for you uh, and you can of course at Wix.com you can have a look at the um, uh, the templates they've got and see those ones and they've got examples but Loads and loads. I'm going to say dozens and dozens, but they've yeah. got a lot, hundreds probably yeah. of these. Good. Okay. Well, look, that's Wix and that's Squarespace. And they're sort of side by side uh, a little bit. So it's which one you happen to like the look of. And uh, we've worked extensively with Squarespace. So we quite like that. Stuart is a advocate of Wix.com. And honestly, there's not the lo a lot between them. So just choose your flavor. The one, the step up from that, the more powerful website that will enable you to do a lot more. For instance, if you wanted to develop the e-commerce side, and occasionally I talk to uh, James Sumner, one of the authors we've had on the podcast in the past, uh, who lives here in the UK, and he's very big on e-commerce side of things for authors, selling your own books on your website. Now, I think he told me recently it's started to overtake Amazon for him once you put an effort into it. Now, if you want to do that, you probably want a website with a better set of commerce options, and that's likely to be something like WordPress. So WordPress is the next one up, and it's pretty becoming pretty industry standard in our space, isn't it now, John? Yeah, I mean, WordPress is is huge. You'll hear some stats in the chat I have with um, Craig, and it is uh, a go-to option for an awful lot of businesses, whether it's authors or much much bigger businesses. Um, it's it's a tougher call to jump on board with this uh, option than it is with Squarespace and Wix. So if you are uh, running shy of a challenge, I would say perhaps skip the next interview, but uh, and stick with Squarespace and Wix. But if you are up for a bit of a challenge and you're looking for something more robust, multifunctional, I think we, um, we've we advertised our sites with Craigers for the authorpreneur out there, then definitely have a listen to what Craig has got to say. It, it could be for you. So Craig, just 
give us a breakdown in terms of WordPress. What is it? How does it operate? I've heard of things like WordPress.org and WordPress.com and what does it all mean? Yeah. So, um, and I'm a developer and a designer, so I'm not necessarily an expert of the history. So I had to pull this stuff up and get, get ready for this a little bit, John. Um, I'm excited. Awesome. So WordPress is what they call a free and open source system. So it's something that, um, as opposed to some companies develop a proprietary software that's closed and you have to pay for it and it's copyrighted. So you can't really dig into the code. You can't use it yourself. You know what I mean? WordPress is, was built to be free where you can, you can use it without paying anything. And then, um, it's open source. So you can actually dig into the code itself. Um, you can modify it. And um, it's, it's a pretty cool system for, for certain people, and we'll get into that. But um, it was, I think, built for developers, really, people that want to get in and, and dig into the code and expand it and things like that. And um, it looks like it was, it was created in 2003 it was launched. So what is that, 15 years ago? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and so since then, it's obviously grown a, a, a ton. So today, I think as of... As of 2018, uh, it powers 30% of the top 10 million websites. Wow. So it's, it's um, very, very popular out there. One of the, one of the biggest, um, the w- most well-used content management systems on the internet. Okay, that, that's a great introduction. Thanks. Um, I hear you mention words like uh, digging into the code and developers. This will strike terror into some authors out there who perhaps don't have any uh, experience of using code, uh, let alone designing and building a website. Do you think it's a good solution for uh, first time authors? It depends. Um, The reason I started using WordPress and, and a lot of people will say, oh, it's easy to use. It sort of is. Um, it is easy to set up a WordPress site. There, because of the numbers of people using this, you can you can go onto Google, you can pull up millions of articles about how to set up a WordPress site. So that that would be step one. You can go do it. You can get it set up. Um, but then it really, what's going to come into play is a learning curve. You have to put quite a bit of time into figuring out how it works and how to set it up properly, how to make it look good. So um, is it a good option? It's a good option for beginner authors if you want to put the time into it, if you actually want to learn how to do this stuff, and if you're sort of a DIYer, all right? So if you want to be writing books and you just want to get this website taken care of, I'm not sure it's a good option for you. It's, it's going to take quite a bit of time, so um, it's right for the DIYers, I would say, who have a lot of time and patience to put into this. So one of the clearly one of the great things about WordPress is its power and its flexibility, um, and that's where a developer can get in there and really uh, create something that's going to be like nothing else out there. And that's why it has um, an advantage over the likes of Squarespace and Wix and those other template based sites. But I'm assuming that WordPress ticks all the boxes in terms of things like being mobile responsive. Uh, that kind of thing, correct? Yeah, I think as far as, you know, being up on the times and um, being modern, using all the, the latest and greatest technology and, and software, I think WordPress is definitely there because um, it's got, it's really sort of, it was it was developed by a couple of guys a long time ago, but it's sort of built on and improved and updated by a by a variety of people in the community. There's sort of a WordPress community out there and and they're they're digging into it, updating it, um, checking for bugs. So it's, it's really updated as far as all the SEO stuff, um, very SEO friendly, mobile friendly. It's, it's got, it's, it's up on all the latest and greatest, believe me. It's also good for another set of people, which might not be the audience here, but it's um, people that want something very specific, very custom. Um, they know exactly what they want. I've, I've done sites for romance authors. They want it really romancy. You know what I mean? It's, they don't just want it looking like any other website out there. They want a certain feel to it. And so the customization of WordPress is 
you can customize it to meet any needs out there. It's just a matter of getting it done. And um, most of the time, I would I would suggest it's it's good for people who want to hire that done because unless you're a professional develop web web designer developer yourself, um, to take advantage of how flexible WordPress is and how great it can be, how much you can do with it, you probably need to hire it out. So you're going to have to have a decent budget for that. So it's kind of good for that that author that has a good budget for that those things, and also that if you don't have a budget, you you better be willing to put a lot of time and learning into this thing. Okay, okay, that that that's fantastic. Uh, in terms of uh, integrations as well, so you know, being able to integrate your WordPress site with I don't know MailerLite or Mailchimp, is that an option? Does that work well? Yeah, and again, it's because of the popularity of WordPress. I think you're going to find more integrations and more, um, more up to date things that um, allow you to talk to different pieces of software. You're going to find more of that, I think, with WordPress than any other solution out there because just because of the sheer population of people using this. And I, I think it's fair to point out that and I should put my hand up here. Um, I do use a WordPress site because the the self-publishing formula website is based on WordPress. So I do go in there. I've got to admit when I first started using it, and if you remember, Craig, you were helping us out with the first incarnation of the SPF website on WordPress. I was very nervous. I think it kind of scared me a lot, Um, but it it very quickly becomes second nature. And I know my way around it um, very well. Um, Good. But you again hire, hire out sort of those those big things like um, setting it up initially and designing it and things. Yeah, yeah. Which I think you would fit into that second bucket of of, of people that um, want to use the expandability and the customization of WordPress, but you're not going to sit there and, and learn this for an entire year. And it might not even be what you want to, you know, that's not your skill set. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You hire it out. Yeah, no, I think that's a point well made. And um, as perhaps uh, the viewers on YouTube will perhaps have seen some of um, Craig's websites um, played out whilst we've been talking. So you'll get an idea of what he's talking about in terms of the extreme and very um, super functional custom uh, website designs that he he uh, creates for clients, uh, SPF students. So um, I think what we've dis- discovered with this discussion is that actually, if you're looking at the um, at the the simplest starting options, it's probably not going to be WordPress. It might be something you'd have a look at perhaps a little bit further down the line. And certainly, if you've got the budget to actually invest in a um, a crack. Uh, website maker such as um, as Craig here. Um, in terms of, can you? Is it possible to trial a WordPress site before you actually commit? Yes, definitely, because uh, it's free. You you really the only cost to getting started with WordPress is you need to host it yourself. So you can go and grab a hosting account with, I mean, you you probably recommend a, several of them. And a lot of those accounts, those hosting accounts, offer a, a, like a 30 day money back guarantee. So just make right. sure you find one that has a, a money back guarantee. And what you can do is just get that trial of the hosting, go and install WordPress. A lot of those hosts have a way to install WordPress easily. Then you can play with it. You don't even have to set it up on your domain. If a lot of them will, will sort of create a temporary domain for you. And you can sort of play around and just see how it works. Try setting up the site, mm-hmm. you know, and it, you might find very quickly in the first day that it's not for you. I would at okay. the same time use those other solutions that you're talking about here, Squarespace and Wix. I believe they probably have free trials too, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they do. I would, you know, if I was a, an author starting out, I would probably create a free trial on all three and try to yeah. create a site, see see how, if you're the type that's gonna create it yourself, I would try to dig in and create these things yourself. If you're the type that's gonna hire it out, I think WordPress would be a very attractive option. We should mention that for students of the um, Self-Publishing Formula 101 course, uh, Craig actually hosts a session on uh, building a WordPress site and he will talk you through how to get started with that. So that, that might be a good yeah. starting point for those students who are intrigued by what Craig has got to say. The one thing I think I will say about WordPress sites is that there are a lot of them 
a lot of them are stunning. Craig's websites are beautiful to look at as well as being very functional. So they must work. They've been around for a long time now and they are robust and should deliver uh, plenty of bang for your buck. And at the end of the day, this is all about creating a shop window for your brand. Your brand is going to be in books and writing. So you want to make sure it stands out and um, gets noticed and actually yep. gets you more book sales, right? That's what it's all okay. about. As with all of these sites, there's nothing to stop you getting a little bit of help if you feel it's needed. As luck would have it, we've compiled all of this useful information into a single PDF, uh, which you can, uh, which you'll be able to access when we launch this podcast. So if you head over to selfpublishingformula.com author website, forward, all one forward word. slash author website. Oh God, yeah, yeah. let's try to think. <laughs> no, it's all right. Let's keep that mistake on there so people understand. At least I'm not treading on cables. It's, it's not all well rehearsed. Yeah, you're not, you're yeah. Not, you haven't pulled anything over yet, although I can't see for certain about that. Yeah, <laughs> I've so, removed all liquids. Selfpublishingformula.com forward slash author website. Um, that's, that's the one. That will be the one. one. So we'll, basically we'll put all the links in there to everything we've discussed yeah. today and include, uh, we'll probably include links to Craig Mathias because he offers a service, a bespoke service for you that is slightly higher end. Um, but if that's the uh, what you're looking for and you need, he is, we would, I mean, I'd say this unhesitatingly because we've used him extensively. We would recommend Craig Mathias and we wouldn't include his links yeah. if we didn't. Definitely recommend Craig. He's a man who knows his onions when it comes to WordPress sites. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, look, I think that's it. So we've done Squarespace, Wix and uh, and WordPress. There are other providers out there, but you know you can get overwhelmed with choice and we've chosen three that you can't really go wrong with, we don't think. Uh, with that accent on the aesthetically pleasing, professional looking website that you need to have as an author. So John, I'm going to say thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thanks for not putting anything over or stepping on the dog during the podcast. I think you it's have, not over yet. You have stepped on the dog <laughs> during a phone call of mine before. I've had it yelping. But um, <laughs> but then she shouldn't sleep under your desk. Uh, so, yeah, look, good. thanks very much indeed. We'll remind people again, selfpublishingformula.com forward slash author website, and you can get the links uh, to everything that John and I have been discussing. Okay, we threw out a few links there and uh, we put together some bits and pieces for you that might help you uh, uh, on a PDF. So if you want to go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash author website, you can download that PDF and uh, give you those links to it. May include affiliate links. Can't remember if we have affiliate links to some of those sites, but um, even if it is an affiliate link, which obviously we would then get a cut uh, if you use that link and signed up, but we only ever put links to products that we recommend um, and never simply because it's an affiliate link. And there are them. There are those products that we, we don't mention and we haven't turned down and we haven't passed muster with us. So uh, this is not a uh, not a cheap thing to say. OK, good. Well, I hope that was useful. Um, and, uh, you know, we just reiterate what we said at the beginning, kind of the theory that goes through this. And it's a very Dawsonian theory is that everything you do as an author needs to look popping and amazing and professional and if somebody googles your name because they've seen your book or someone's mentioned it what they land on needs to be absolutely indistinguishable from a mainstream author who's published by random house or hatchet or, or anyone else and that's the absolute thing that should be in your mind and that's why we've chosen these three platforms because they can all deliver that to you and squarespace and wix they can deliver it to you frankly for peanuts um and uh, yeah and and fairly easily as well so it's the dorsonian theory Look indistinguishable from the big boys. Or better. If you look at most, um, well, not most, but you look at plenty, it doesn't take long on the internet to find uh, well-known authors with absolutely awful websites. Um, one of the biggest selling authors in the world, um, I won't mention for fear of getting sued. Actually, no, I wouldn't get sued. But anyway, he, he has an absolutely terrible, terrible website um, that I'm surprised hasn't been changed. So it's, it's you know, it is important to get it looking uh, as nice as possible and, and you can do better than uh, a lot of the big boys uh, a fraction of the budget they would have spent on their websites as well so yeah definitely uh, an opportunity to do well there great okay a reminder that if you want to have a look in more detail at the 101 course you can go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash 101 
And that is it from Mark and I for this week. We'll be back next week. We'll have a date for that drinks meetup in uh, the United States, in uh, in Florida, if you can make it. It shall be towards the end of September. Uh, Until then, well, until next week, we will speak to you again then. Have a great week. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Self-Publishing Formula podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingformula.com for more information, show notes, and links on today's topics. You can also sign up for our free video series on using Facebook ads to grow your mailing list. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.